I think the big question we're all wondering is, what's going to happen in tech? Is the sell-off going to continue? And then as an addendum, is now the time to have a strong stomach and buy into some of these companies whose valuations have been a little bit too lofty for a little bit too long? Okay, so uh, we've been in a risk-off year, uh, to put it mildly, that's a nice way to say it. Uh, we're now starting to get to the point where um, we've had dramatic uh, derating. Multiples have come down uh, across most of big tech, almost all tech. Uh, that's because of uh, you know ri uh, rising inflation has led to concerns over rising rates. And if you have long duration assets where you have high multiples and future profits, that's always a negative environment for uh, these kind of stocks. So that's why the multiples have come down. But now we're getting into the recession risk, which is if there's a recession, all of these stocks are very strongly cyclical. So uh, you're going to have to have uh, estimates revisions. And I think that's what the market is now insisting on, demanding on. Estimates need to come down for a good number of these stocks if the market is going to soften. And until we know whether that's the case or not, uh, I think these stocks are going to remain under pressure. And so if they remain under pressure, does that mean that we should wait a little bit? If you have money to put into tech and you want to go there, is now still not the time? Does it sound like you think things are going to continue to fall a little further, so wait for that entry point? So I guess the question is, are, are we going into recession? If we are, how severe is it, and how much of that is estimated in? In other words, how much do the estimates really need to come down on some of these names? So take an Amazon, for example. You mentioned that. Uh, that's off uh, you know, 40 percent a year to date. One of the issues that Amazon's had is that it's fully exposed to all these macro trends. I mean, it is one of the most, uh, you know, with one and a half million employees, uh, very deep supply chains that go back into China, huge exposure to fuel costs, labor costs, input costs, trucking services, you, you know, you name it, uh, uh, shipping container costs. It is, macro, it is as macro exposed as a company can be. And uh, you need to have a moderation and in inflation for, uh, for the market to start having confidence that those estimates don't need to get uh, a cut again in the back half of this year. And then there's the issue about the demand. I guess when to answer the question, Courtney, is you sort of have to answer for yourself. Are you going to be a trader? Or are you going to be an investor? My guess is that if you're willing to uh, take on risk, near-term volatility, near-term, that you're going to get a really good return buying these assets if you look out a year or a year and a half. But that you know the next 10% move in these stocks could just as easily be down as these estimates get cut. The next 50% move in these stocks, I'm pretty certain, is going to be up if, you, if you've got a 12 to 18-month investment horizon. Hmm. Okay, so assuming that maybe you are looking at a longer horizon, it does look like you've made some changes, some rotations in some of your top picks. What are you looking at right now for your top picks in the mega and large cap tech space? You know, I, I want to be as defensive as possible. And the issue is that there's not much that's really defensive in, uh, in tech. Um, uh, so what I want to do is find what I call DHQs, these dislocated high quality companies. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll stick with Amazon just a little longer, which is it's still the leader, global leader in cloud computing, and cloud computing is going to be growing over the next one, three, and five years, irregardless of whether we're having a recession near term. It's still the leader in online retail globally, and it's one of the three or four biggest uh, leaders uh, globally in terms of online advertising. So that story is well intact. Now, there's some operational issues near term, and then there's this massive um, uh, exposure to inflation risks and to consumer mm -hmm. softening. But nonetheless, like the long-term thesis, I think is really well intact in a name like that and on Google. So I'm looking for the highest quality uh, assets. They're, they are dislocated. Here's your chance to actually buy, you know, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Google at, uh, at pretty substantial discounts. A couple of these names, especially Amazon's 40% off its historic multiples. That has to be attractive, even if you think estimates still need another 5%, 10% cut. Hmm. I'm, I'm interested in, in hearing a little bit more about why Lyft and Match Group, and I guess Airbnb okay. as well, still look good to you in this reopening trade. If we're looking at potentially going into a recession, does that thesis still stand for those three? I'm not sure it does, um, but I will make the point that there's some, you know, the one area of consumer spend that so far has held up uh, beautifully or extremely well is travel. So we've got a record leisure travel um, uh, summer uh, coming up, or that's what we're in now. So names like um, Booking, Expedia, and mm -hmm. uh, Airbnb, in the space that I look at, I think are fully levered to that. One of the reasons I particularly like Booking, by the way, BKNG, right. uh, is that I refer to it as a Venn diagram stock. <laughs> it's high quality. That, that, that business model, that balance sheet, that management team have been battle tested. They're, it's a high, highly profitable, uh, well, really well um, a financed uh, uh, balance sheet, plenty of cash. They buy back stocks. You got high quality 
and it's a clear recovery play as people travel. So, right. you know, that, that to me is one of the few safe havens, <laughs> and it's pretty much trading in line with the S&P 500. Again, there's not too many places to hide in tech, unfortunately. Right.